of a club in order to quest to today's event, application of AI in Society 5.0. Our distinguished speaker, Mr. Atul Tripathi, was a big data and artificial intelligence consultant in National Security Council Secretariat and has 18 plus years of experience in the MN field of artificial intelligence. It is indeed an honor to be able to enhance our knowledge on this field from a pioneer such as himself, Mr. Atul Tripathi. We extend our heartfelt gratitude for agreeing to impart your experience with all of us present here, despite your busy schedule. I'm confident that all the participants will gain immensely from this event. Without further ado, I call upon Mr. Tripathi to start with the event. Thank you. Uh, thank you for those kind words and uh, welcome all. I hope I'm audible first of all. Please feel free. This is your class. This is your sessions. I'll be very happy to share my views, thoughts, comments. It's your, you are supposed to be taking the things forward. You know? So what do you think? Or what do you think is society fighting? Anybody? This is a very latest term, by the way. This is a very, very hot topic. Have you heard about climate change, climate risk? Has anybody heard about all these things? Yes, sir. What do you yes, think? Yes, sir. It? Is it a big area, or a small area? It's a big, big area, area, sir. Oh. Why do you think it's a big, becoming a big area? So because it is a real issue, like uh, uh, climate change is a real issue, so that is it. So can somebody give me an example of it being a real issue? So like water levels are rising day by day. Okay. That's one example. But So climate change. Okay, climate change. Very good. So water levels rising, climate change. Very good. What else? Depletion of natural resources. Okay. So depletion of ozone layer. Mm -hmm. Somebody else? Okay. Sir, pollution. Plastics and also plastic in ocean. Sir. Sorry? Plastics in ocean. Plastics, okay. So population explosion. <laughs> ah, that's fair enough. So I'll give you two examples. Did you know that 80% of ocean's junk constitute of three companies across the world? No, sir. No, sir. Coca-Cola, Pepsi, and McDonald's. Are you aware of this thing? 25% of the ocean's junk. Are you aware of this? No, sir. We didn't know that. No, let, sir. Me give, let me give another example. Are you have you you must have all heard about Nariman Point in Bombay? Yes, sir, yes. Sir. Mumbai, sorry. I mean people are very sensitive to words. I'm sorry about Mumbai. Mumbai, right? Yes, sir. You heard about heard about, heard about this okay. Nariman Point? Has everybody heard about it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now do you know by next uh, 2050, and we are sitting in 2020, right? 22 rather. Right? So in our lifetimes, 38 years hence, 80% of Nariman Point would be under sea. Are you aware of this thing? No, sir. I didn't know that. Ah. No, sir. No, sir. I don't know this. And where do you think the impact would be if you have 80% of the Nariman Point under sea? What happens to that? So, uh, mostly on humans only and... Uh... The, the aquatic life also would be destroyed. What else? So crisis of water. Okay, what else? What else? Uh, sir, all the wastage of the sea will be left ashore on the land. Uh -huh. But if I was to tell you that this is going to be having a real life impact on the balance sheet of the company, would you believe that? Oh, uh, yes, sir. How? So, like the companies which depend on fish, like or they produce fish or like uh, things. Uh, uh, since there would be no aquatic life, uh, fishes and all will be. Let me give you a real example. 
companies dealing in real estates they will be suffering immensely companies in 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 dealing in capital markets would be suffering immensely companies dealing in insurance industry would be suffering immensely would you agree with me on that point not sir how will insurance company get up how do you insure your houses wouldn't the insurance company be liable for the penalties and disasters yes, yes. that will be taking place mm. capital markets would also be suffering the yes, credit sir. market would be suffering yes sir so do you think it's more of a talk shop this climate risk climate change disaster risk society five risk is it more of a talk shop now or is it a serious problem on the balance sheet we're looking at serious problem sir it's actually a major problem now in fact companies have started to spend about 15% of their budgets on esg environment society and governance that is a big big area that all of us can target to make a great career that's what i want to highlight you know how technology is enabling how technology is going to enable all of us in the coming years so the So, I mean, first of all, what is this society? You know, let, let's try and understand what is Society Five Point Zero. If you look at this thing, what is happening out here? You had initially got this hunter-gatherer society, right? Then we moved to the agrarian, and then we came to the industrial society, and then we came to the information society. And now we have got a knowledge-driven society altogether. What is happening is. from the information society to the knowledge driven society why do we say that there is a huge transformation because you see you are bringing in a change in the lifestyle of people you are bringing in a complete way the world is beginning to look at things you know so much of information flowing in at a real time basis how can you take a call how can you take a judgment and the real time to save lives we'll see some examples as we go down the line and this is what i want to highlight in today's discussion no? that how is this society and this this thing going to impact us how is this entire so what are we trying to do is we are trying to create a society where we are trying to resolve various social challenges and what are we trying to do is we are trying to incorporate innovations of the fourth industrial revolution so we are in the fourth industrial revolution and the fifth generation of society interesting isn't it so that you can have a future where which is giving us new values services and is continuously in upgrading itself so you know you are having a high degree of merging between cyber space and physical space to balance economic advantages advancement and with the resolution of society social problems by providing goods and services that are granularly addressing your mainfold uh, latent needs and it's regardless of the local the age the sex the gender the vision so everything else you know So you will come across examples where technology is being enabling all these things. Yeah? That is how the world has started to change, and therefore you have this entire game that has started to change. Now you see what has happened. If you see this thing, what happened in the 1980s? We had the mainframe servers. I don't know whether how many of you remember that thing. You had the mainframe where you were doing knowledge engineering. You were trying to find out whether you are a domain expert, and you were trying to do knowledge engineering. Where you were trying to do the you know base more uh, knowledge you're trying to figure out based on that you had a decision support systems altogether then by the time 90s approximately mid 90s right and about 2000 right we had we started to get into a, a a system which was you know trying to come over in terms of your you know uh, uh, classification or trying to do a scalability in comparisons and trying to make a contrasting of the good purposes enough good enough purposes for the data discovery part and then we came down to about you know predominantly we were trying to look at large servers and farms and cloud based systems you know where we try to do neurosciences and we are trying to play a prob game of probability where we are trying to uh, look at more on the, uh, on a case where we are trying to do more of image processing and everything else and then subsequent to which a time came story we were trying to do more of uh, you know discovery of patterns and everything else right and now what is happening we are heading towards a, an algorithmic convergence of society 
where you see what is happening in this thing what is happening out here look at this car now just imagine you are driving uphill now you would know how much of fuel what is the mileage what is the tire pressure everything else you would know but imagine you are being fed into a real time system by a by a by a decision making system all this information is being fed real time to the car which is going ahead and you are able to drive the car because now what we are doing is we are moving towards fog computing from cloud computing we are moving towards fog computing have you heard about the word fog computing has anybody heard about the word fog computing fog Has anybody heard? No, sir. No, no sir. The so fog computing is all about you know processing of information. The cloud is all about collection of information that the devices install. You have multiple devices and they're trying to take decisions. They're trying to you know take the information, process that process that decision on a cloud computer based servers, and then they are pushing it back the decision back to your systems. in case of a fog computing what happens is that these devices that are installed they become smart enough to take a decision in the real time system itself so just imagine have you heard about this driverless metro systems has anybody heard about it yes sir it's already running by the way in delhi this is this kind of a system is already running driverless metro systems So just imagine you have to take a call at the drop of hat, whether to go ahead or to stop. Earlier it was human beings who could take the call. Now systems are different. So this is where the tra transformation is coming into picture. That's why the entire computing architecture has also started to change, and therefore the enhancement of the society is also taking place. And then you have this, you know, how is this entire thing changing? Look at this thing. So we had the hunter gatherer where we were trying to capture and we were trying to have a stone and soil as a material transportation was a foot and then we were you know we had small settlements and viability was the idea to all the way now to you know information society for for dot zero we did, dealt with information where we were looking at ICT superior technologies then we had semiconductors as materials multi mobility was another form then form of settlement became network society because you move from linear industrial society cities to all the way network cities and profitability was the was the ideal and then uh, you look at now the society 5.0 what is it talking about it's talking about super smart set of societies with the merging of the physical and the cyber space that is going to take place and there is a the material 5.0 is going to be used and what is material 5.0 Where a lot of information is going to be processed at one time period. You could have an example would be autonomous driving. Have you heard about autonomous driving? Has anybody heard about it? Yes, yes, sir. yes, sir. Then you could have a decentralized cities altogether. So now earlier it was network cities. Now you could have every city is going to be decentralized in nature. By the way, this is all going to have a real time impact on your lives and businesses. So this is no more theory. This is no more shop talk. Talk shop. This is real-time systems we are looking at, and we'll need people. We'll need smart engineers. We'll need smart people, businessmen who can solve real-time problems. So we are not, I'm not talking about anything that is talk shop. Let me again repeat myself. This is no talking of, you know, con con conference types. Electric vehicles, hydrogen vehicle. Has anybody heard about hydrogen vehicles? Yes, sir. It's becoming the new technology. That's a new forte. So the world has actually started to look from away. India, in particular, has started to look all the way away from electric vehicles towards hydrogen vehicles because it's cheap. What is the only requirement? In electric vehicles, you would need cobalt and other, you know, expensive resources in order to produce a battery. But in case of hydrogen technology, you don't need anything of that kind. It's cheap. It's got zero emissions. So now this is real time. So now just imagine you are tr you're trying to set up a business or you're trying to solve a problem as an engineer on a hydrogen based systems. Let's look at it. What what exactly is happening out here? When why why is this all this thing? You know, because you see what is happening is you are going to be looking at a framework. 
So this is all going to be about cognitive systems. So I'm sure you must have heard about cognitive systems now, by now. Have you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what are you trying to do? You're trying to ingest a variety of data points where you're trying to respond based on your confidence level and learn with every interaction while you're trying to have a dialogue and understand natural language. And you're trying to evaluate your hypothesis and give a contextual guidance so that you can have a scaled proportional responses. Because you're trying to support the decision making. Now, <clears throat> why the natural language understanding? Because if you don't understand the natural language, how will you understand the human interaction with the systems? So here, the NLP part becomes very important. So NLP is what? Speech, write, written part, textual part, processing. You're trying to do some, some kind of an evaluation, hypothesis you're trying to do. You're trying to make a smart decision making system. Systems that can take a call on themselves. They don't have to define. One of the classic examples is, you know, you're going down the road. Classic cases, you know, these autonomous vehicles. Should it hit a child or should it hit an old man? It is going to hit. That's also, by the way, that's also a serious problem of financial industry. How do you decide? Have you heard about third party liability? When you're driving a car, have you heard about that? Yes, sir. Who's liable? Let me ask you if you, if an autonomous car goes on to hit, who is liable? Who do you think should be liable? Who, should, who do you think should pay to the third party? <coughs> Sorry? Yes, sir, to the third party. Who is going to pay? So the car company. Sir. Why should the car company pay? So the insurance company. So why should the insurance company pay? <coughs> The insurance company will say, I am, I am liable for human beings, not for automated systems. The car company will say, why should I pay? It's the job of the insurance company. Who else do you think should pay? The driver. The why should driver, the driver pay? It's an autonomous vehicle. Now, these are serious problems you're looking at. And these are serious business problems. I'm not talking you know, theory out here. This is real life problem you're looking at. And therefore, you need to do all these things. You need to engage in a dialogue system. Where you, and this is also going to be a very important part of life. Where you're looking at a contextual driven insights so as to make a proper decision making support system. So this is what are the correct characteristics of a community system you're looking at. And therefore, the frameworks. So you look at this thing. What is it about? As I said, you know, it's all about physical to the cyber world and then back to the social world. You look at this thing. When you go into an environment, it's a physical environment, then you're trying to do some kind of a sense of perception learning. So let me give an example of this thing. The ATM machines of the world. Now we use an ATM card, right? We are using ATM cards, right? Yes, sir. So there are new banking concepts that are coming into picture now. Have you heard about this? Oh, no, sir. Sorry? Uh, not yet. So new banking systems are coming into picture where they're talking about, no, I will not be using any more of these systems. You know, why should you, why should a card, why should a bank pay for you for your card? You know, it's a very expensive stuff. You have to print the card, you have to collect the information, you have to print the card, you have to transport the card, you have to deliver the card to the user concerned, provide with an ADM uh, pins, and such a big system involved out there. Why can't we have our own uh, you know, biometrics? Now that is a very classic example, right? Very classic example. Can any one of us go and make another other card? Can no, any sir. one of us go? No, sir. How and why? Because you are being identified with biometrics, which is very Sorry, data is, I have a doubt. Yeah. 
like if data is stored in a system the government has the data so the data can be taken from there the biometrics can be taken from where can be hacked from the government system where the oh. uh, our biometrics are stored you think that it's that easy when biometrics you can be taken up that easy sir but in that way uh, like the hacking system the more advanced hackers no, like not, no no we had on a very high level na no no hang on hang on let me tell you very frankly there's a lot yes. of romanticization about these hackers we tend to romanticize them a lot let me be very frank with you okay a thief is a thief is a thief is a thief let me be very blunt a hacker is only a thief okay so coming back to this example of you know the framework you go and stand in front of an atm that's a physical environment you yourself and the atm is a physical environment then it's going to do a perception learning or sensory learning it's going to identify you it's going to do some kind of an so you're going to get, get a sense of sensing uh, control layers you know We could read where it's going to identify you, and then it is going to do an data analytics. Effectively, it is going to take your biometrics and make a comparison with its own database, and then divide derive a semantic derivation is going to be there, where it's going to do a knowledge discovery based on the context and ontology. So it can be either your iris, your voice scan, your uh, you know speech scan, or your voice recognition, your uh, your iris, your fingerprinting, anything. Then it's going to make a decision. If it is able to take a call, then it goes ahead. If it doesn't go, then it comes back again to take an adapt, uh, action accordingly and let you know that you are not being identified. So again, you go back to this entire process. Once the decision has been made, then the service is going to be provisioned. So it's all about between physical world and the so cyber uh, cyber world with the social world, where the demand has to be met. This is where the world has come down to. This is what we are looking at today's world. This is what the world wants to solve its problems in, based on. And I'm not talking about hypothesis out here, right? I mean, these are all real-time systems. As I said, you know, natural language processing, support evidence, evaluate hypothesis, offer a contextual guidance, support decision making. This is what is banking 2.0, as we call it, and we are heading towards that. It is no more about fantasy worlds it's a reality that we're going to face very soon you're going to have atms going to be atm cards and credit cards are going to be debit cards and credit cards are going to be withdrawn the banks are going to say we have enough data of yours we can identify you individually that also makes us to another question you know why why I mean how do we take the advantages of this society 5.0 so actually what has happened because there is an abundance of accumulation of real time data based because you're based on health medical data from our universal health care system the wealth of operating data you know you have now multiple uh, manufacturing facilities you have an environment that is rich in uh, real time market economic industries there and then this japanese word called as uh, monozukri which is actually talks about in japan it's called as excellence in manufacturing of things that's where the world has moved you know they they believe in monozukri and that's what the concept of industry 4.0 is has anybody heard about industry 4.0 has anybody heard about this has anybody heard about it so you're trying to take advantage towards creating products and solutions based on Information technologies like big data, AI, and you're trying to release them into society, and that's how the world has started to change. Let's take some of the examples. You know, this was a very class. This is a very classic example. Where an aging, you know, societies, <clears throat> and the countries are suffering because there's an increase, there's an increase in the medical costs associated, and there's a social security expenses and demand for say caring for the elderly. So based on that, based on this information technology and all these technologies that are available, big data and AI and real-time processing systems, you can connect and share information between the medical data users, including your medical checkup records as well as the treatment and nursing care records. You can put the medical uh, remotely. You can put medical care services into practice. You can use AI and robotics for nursing facility. Aren't we seeing it? 
in our today's world in the in the world of coronavirus have we not seen this so effectively by connecting and sharing medical data you you try to disperse various hospitals you know you try to connect your disperse various hosp hospitals effective medical treatment based on what data data would be provided so remote medical care is being taking place have we not seen it in our real life time systems yes sir we yes sir there was a a couple of years ago a remote a remote operation was performed in gujarat by a doctor sitting in in, in ahmedabad and he performed an a, a, and he performed an operation which is about 70 kilometers away from ahmedabad using robotics that is where the world of 5g will take you we need people we need experts in these areas coronavirus we have already seen robots being used to you know send medicines and food to the patients concerned because the nurses and the nursing staff and the uh, the, the paramedics and the doctors are very very afraid haven't we seen that yes sir yes sir so do you think it's a fantasy world no sir let's take another case mobility this is again changing a lot you know because the population is declining because this is because there's under populated rural areas are there there is going to be a lack of public transportation but there is a fast growing of e-commerce segments that have been short this going to be having a shortage of drivers and then you're going to promote your use of autonomous driving through taxis and buses for public transportation so you're trying to have a rural transportation which is going to be very remotely available and then you're going to have your improved in distribution of distribution logistics because you're trying to increase the efficiency and introduce innovations that's where the people of you know particularly what is going to happen is the people in the underpopulated areas they since they are finding it difficult to shop and visit hospitals because there is a lack of public transportation the autonomous vehicles will enable them to travel more easily and the delivery of drones will be making it possible have you heard about this use of drones for medical medicines being transported in jnk have you heard about this case yes sir yes sir yes sir yes yes sir in fact yesterday i was seeing something very interesting in iceland drones have started to use and they 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 being they have been used right now to deliver your goods and food items it has started to become yes, very sir. popular in fact they have legalized it now this is soon the matter is also going to do yes I was about to come to the example as well that's very nice Now let's look at another case. You know, case in point is about the infrastructure. So there's, there's a lot of deterioration of public infrastructure that is taking place. So the you know the because of the rapid economic growth period that has been created and the shortage of skilled labor and an increase in the financial burden of inspection and maintenance. So your sensors, AI, and robots they are being used to inspect and maintain roads and bridges and tunnels and dams. So now, actually, I'll give you two examples. one is a very engine driven context unfortunately it is the truth of life in india as well the manual scavenging have you heard about it has anybody heard about manual scavenging oh uh, no sir i have not heard anybody else it's about cleaning your pits The human excreta, it is still very much a part of Indian society, unfortunately. Mm. So manually you scavenge it out. Ah, no. And Supreme Court has, over time and again, instructed the governments to stop this activity. This is very demeaning to human beings. And therefore, now the governments have started to use robots. This is a real-time example, by the way. You can go over to the internet and search use of robots for manual scavenging. Another example I'll give you is about roads maintenance. So you don't have to actually go do anything else. A drone flies over a particular path of road, takes the image, makes a comparison, finds out the depth of the hole, and the damages it can predict based on your current patterns of heavy traffic, weather, you know, um, you know, soil conditions, everything. 
then it makes a predictive analytics that how you can improve or when is the damage going to take place so how will you uh, minimize your unexpected ac uh, accidents that you are expecting how will you in decrease your time spent in construction how will you ensure the safety and productivity is going to increase these are real time examples i'm giving you so actually what is happening is why is it happening is basically there is going there is a flood of information that is taking place a flood of information has started to take place and essentially use of technology has become so important because you can clearly see that people have started to you know adopt technologies when we were you know earlier in the narrow ai based rule based speech based systems and you were trying to do a decision making to a b2c streaming searching e-commerce became very popular so you could do a lot of image processing you could do based big statistical analysis learning and then we are we are heading towards you know neuro computing and brain computer interfaces and emotional robots so self driving cars home services robots they are becoming very popular so you going to have in future perhaps you will be having emotional robots robots with emotions because these can these these technologies have become so popular over the time period that adopting them for human needs is no more a very complicated job would you agree with me on this point or not yes 100% yes sir anybody has a view thought comment i would be happy Yes, sir. Like in Saudi Arabia, uh, Sofia is already being given us given us citizenship. The yeah. remote. Yes. Let's take another case, sir. Huh? Take this case. This is a real example, by the way. Can you see this, Vicky dude? All you need to do is you're in. Just imagine you're walking to a new city and you don't know what is where. You don't know where is the bank, where is the tea shop, where is the coffee shop. Where are the shopping malls? All you do is hold your camera, or hold your mobile phone, smart device. It will tell you exactly the location of everything else within your vicinity. And this is a real-time example. You can download it. Word lens, another one. I don't know what Spanish looks like, you know. Word lens of the camera, you can call it do. Actually, it means word lens is a dictionary evolved. Volkswagen Marta again. You don't have to do anything else now. I'm sure some of us, or all of us, must have taken our cards, or you know, your parents' cards. You must have taken to the show, to the you know, your showrooms or the places where they meant to, you know, take the take care of the cars. What do you do? They just take a image, and they'll tell you what the condition of the car is. They, this is Volkswagen Marta is a very classic example. So what they do is they look at the data flowing in from the. from the various places and they are doing an analysis it's a predictive analytics game that they are playing so they are effectively telling you how your systems are going to be looking in the in the coming time let's take another example this is again human 2.0 becoming more sensitive to what you look at this this is again a no more a fantasy this is a real time it is being used right now here in india itself whether in the military forces paramilitary police forces everywhere else what effectively this do, this does is these smart glasses they actually enable you to differentiate between friendly fires and hostile fires on a battlefield where life matters life and death matters you should be able to predict what is a real time friendly fire and what is a real time hostile fire so based on these cameras you can say there are sensors organized and these glasses these smart glasses tell you that this is where it is look at this case of a doctor there is surgery that is going on and the patient is being in real time basis the patient information is flowing and what is happening in the due course of time is that the system is telling the doctors or the surgeons concerned that this is what the condition of the heart is and the other parts of the organ are this is how the flow of blood and the other parameters 
and these are again real time examples this is the cl classic case of use of technology to enable human lives because so every human life matters and this is what is society 5.0 how can you use these technologies to enable to, to ensure that you have a good life? Let's take another case. These are very one popular ones. You don't have to go to this showroom. This is a classic case of IKEA. They have this example. So if anybody visits the IKEA showroom, you don't have to actually go and take a photograph and come back and buy the stuff or buy the stuff virtually and bring it to your drawing room. You have these applications. I'm sure some of us must have tried out this one. You see the lady yes. who's holding, lady is holding a yellow color dress. Without actually trying, you can actually, you can come to know how would you look in the on the, in the uh, on the dress. Now, why is it important in today's world in particular? Is two reasons. One, you save time because you're not standing outside the changing room. And two, because of the coronavirus, you don't know who has touched. And whether the person who has touched the dress, uh, whether that person was infected or not infected. So it saves your time, it saves your health. And these are smart glasses, these are smart, uh, you know, mirrors, they call us. I'm sure you must have tried, some of, some of us must have tried it out, right? Have we? So I never tried, but uh, I've heard this idea. Yeah, you should try that. Yes, sir. <laughs> Look at this thing. Instead of really designing and coming to know how your design of the engine would look like, these guys have actually made a 3D model. So 3D printing is again a reality now. No more fantasy worlds. Now, another thing that has become very popular in, in particularly in today's world is the application of the AI for climate change. I want to talk about these certain aspects. How these technologies are going to enable people for climate change, clean energy, clean power, these are becoming very important ones. So what's happening out here is when you have a clean power equipment, you're trying to optimize your energy systems forecasting. So machine learning and deep learning machine learning analysis will, will provide you will provide the electricity consumption patterns so that you can make a real-time intelligent decision. You are trying to op maximize the efficiency of the energy. So you have, you're going to have more efficient production, you're going to have better use of resources, lower environmental impacts, smart metering, you're going to be another one on the clean power side. Then the machine learning algorithm is going to analyze the data from the millions of, millions of these smart meters that are there. I'm sure you must have heard about this thing. Smart meters are already there in our life, right? Yes, sir. Because you're trying to do a predictive analytics for your smart grids. Because suppliers, because essentially what is going to happen, the suppliers will understand the peak usage time and, and the downtime at the granular level and how this data can be used to optimize your overall electricity supply. Solar and wind energy plant assessment. So the sensors are attached to the solar and wind generation plants and trying to supply data for the machine learning and monitoring cap capabilities and you're trying to enable remotely inspection of sites so that you can do predictive maintenance, you can do energy resource forecasting. Because you're trying to increase the efficiency and control of the maintenance of tasks and you're trying to lower the cost of solar wind energy. One thing is on the similar lines is about, you know, uh, smart cities and homes. Because you're trying to do an efficiency, you're trying to bring in energy efficiency and trying to build and design systems where machine learning will be able to simulate, simulate and your, your energy consumptions during the designing phase. So you can then guide them to energy efficiencies. You can have a better designing phases. Operations are there. Similarly, smart transportation systems would be there, where you're looking at smart traffic flow. So street lights, you know, these these smart cities is all about using AI algorithms. But then you can use the data from the radar centers and cameras to detect the uh, traffic and, uh, and and build a street light timing that plan according to which is trying to. You know, based on your uh, sunsets and sunrises. So these AI controlled traffic lights and the real time vehicle navigation systems are going to ease the congestion and reduce air po air pollution altogether. AI enabled, uh, you know, on demand response of the transport mobility. 
So AI can be used to analyze data from weather, user behavior, you're trying to generate to generate your insights that will form the management and trans of transport networks across the city and enable a more efficient mobility services. So this will result in your increased efficiency and utilization of transportation. And ultimately, it will enable a connected and autonomous fleet of vehicles and energy consumption of, will be benefited. So do you guys agree with me on these points or not? Yes, sir, 100%. What about the others? Do you agree with me or not? I mean, you don't yes, sir. To... Yes, sir. We agree. Yeah, yes, sir. Do you see a potential for a career out there? Because again, this is not plain, simple, you know, disruption or introduction of a new technology. This is about disruption of the way human beings interact with the environment altogether. Take another case of biodiversity and con con conservation. How AI can enable, you know? Let's take the case of habitat protection and restoration. So precise land use mapping. So GIS based system and machine learning models will be used. They are being used to generate accurate land use models and simulate the impact of different land use activities because you're trying to do your planning options. We have uh, services from Microsoft and SRE where you are using land based mapping under different planting scenarios so as to enable optimized con conservation of uh, to protect and restore local habitats bird habitat and migration pattern very important birds are very very important in our ecosystems because the crowd source bird observation reporting is there and they're looking at remote sensing of data which is using machine learning to predict where there will be a change in the habitat and certain species I'm actually working on a bird call recognition systems right now. So we, we have these devices which record the bird calls. And then we try and do an analysis. It's a kind of a speech analysis. Instead of a human speech, you're just doing a bird call analysis. And you try and find out how the bird calls are going to look. At. Because based on that, you can find the, the migratory patterns and the changes in the habit, habitats that is taking place. Take another example, you know, you know, invasive species and disease control. So plant disease identification and detection. Agritech companies, they're using it very efficiently. So you have a, they are actually using an AI driven system to for image analytics based on crowd outsourced images data to understand and identify the, and identify and prevent and treat the required, you know, um, uh, treatment for the crops that are there because you're trying to support the optimal you're trying to provide the optimal treatment and watering of the crops let's take another case pollution control analysis of uh, you know uh, run of quality issues you basically multiple models are existing with a, where you can use a highly variable physical phenomena of water and accurately predict the level of biochem biochemical oxygen bod as we call it. biochemical oxygen demand ammonia nitrogen nit nitrate nitrogen, phosphorus, phosphate, and the neural network models, they can monitor the urban storm water pollution levels and enable the development of better water resources and manage it. Take another case of healthy oceans, very important for all of us. How will our oceans become healthy? Three fourths of the earth is oceans, right? Yes, sir. One fourth is land. And the impact is going to be huge. Whether it is on fishing sustainability, where you're looking at overfishing and prevention control. So algorithms which are embedded into fully automated software, you know, the, the, the workers are using in the fishing operations to identify the fish and classify them as species. Because this will enable them to reduce the reduce, uh, reduce the number of protected animals, such as sharks, turtles, you know. And if they're accidentally caught in the, uh, caught along with the other fishes. How will, how will the monitoring of illegal fishing activities, so automated uh, identification system, as we call them, AIS, data are there from the, the user chips, they are there, they are there combining with the other data sets and machine learning to monitor the illegal fishing activities. One of the classic examples is a Google fishing watch. Have you heard about it? No, sir. 
So there you try and predict the commercial fishing behavior in the near real time and help you reveal the ships where AIS transponders are there. So they can be turned on and off and support the law and enforcement protective many areas. You just can't go over fishing like that. There are laws out there. The impact on the climate change, the acidification, the real time monitoring of ocean pollution, temperature and the pH level, the acidification levels. So AI powered robots, you know, they are being used to detect the pollution levels and track the changes in temperature and the pH levels. We are trying to predict, you are trying to uh, provide accurate data of ocean pollution and pH levels, which is being used to develop biodiversity conservation act activity plans. So they are becoming prevention of the pollution, uh, marine after pre predictions. Marine littering for predictions. So AI-enabled techniques that they're, they're, they're there to you know uh, define the general uh, litter categories that are there and that are occurring across beaches, beaches and uh, you know trying to access the litter the pollution that is there. These are kind of things that have already started to happen in our real life uh, world. Let's take another case: disaster. Very, very big area, disaster relief, disaster risk. Have you heard about this area? Mm, yes, sir. What is it about? It's about how will you prevent your disasters to take place? How will you enable systems out there so that disasters can be managed at a real time basis? So whether it is in terms of extreme weather event modeling and predictions, your, your weather forecasting informed flight paths, your climate informatics for enhanced climate modeling, your impact and risk management analytics, emergency risk communications, real-time disaster response coordinations, rapid multi-sources of risk analysis, analytics for financial parametrics or there, analytics for claims analytics, natural catastrophe early warnings, Catastrophe modeling is a big, big area, very complicated and a very big area to be making a great career in. Very big area. Social media enabled disaster response. Yeah. These are big areas that have started to emerge even from the career's perspective. Look at another one. How will you how, what is the role of AI in electricity systems? How can industry how can electricity systems be, I mean, utilizing these kind of technologies that are available? So look at this thing. What are you trying to do? You're trying to predict. You're trying to play the game of prediction all the time, right? You're trying to do a forecasting of the supply accelerating and accelerating the material sciences while merging with the existing technologies. So effectively, you're trying to do a forecasting of supply and demand. Because the variable generation electricity is both is very high and that very fluctuating in nature. So you're trying to forecast in the real time systems of the electric for the electricity scheduling and long term system planning. So that you can have a better short term forecast, which will allow the system operators to reduce their resi resilience on reliance on polluting stand standby plants. And you can proactively manage your increasing amounts of variable resources. Then, uh, you know, about improving the scheduling and flexibility of demands when, because when balancing electricity systems, operators use a process called a scheduling and dispatch to determine how much power energy every controller generator should produce. And this is a very slow and complex process. And it's a very hard NP based problem, hard, uh, hard NP problem, optimization problem that is there. So I'll give you a real example. I was I was discussing. I was giving a session to one of the companies, a large Indian producer of electricity, and uh, they had this problem statement. So I worked on this problem statement. They had this problem statement where you know the 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 the, the, uh, the weather uh, you know department would send them updates in every 15 minutes, while they had to. The, the downtime to bring a change in the grid would be 45 minutes. How do you solve this problem? And every minute change in the in the direction of the storm on the Bay of Bengal side 
was a huge disaster in terms of your uh, financial disaster they were looking at. So 45 minutes is the downtime on the grid. 15 minutes is the updation time that they're getting from the uh, weather department. So your machine learning will help you to improve the existing you know, process of scheduling and dispatching of the speeding up of the power systems while optimizing your problems and improving the quality of your optimization solution. A great deal of work has been in the primary, you know, primarily in the optimization problem. It's a very classical optimization problem where you're going to use the neural networks and genetic algorithms and fuzzy logic because this has to be very focused and tractability of the power system optimization problems. Now, AI for farms and this thing, you know, farms and forests become another very important thing, a very popular area for the application of AI. What are you trying to do? You're trying to improve your systems of the farms out there. How can you do that? You're looking at, you know, precision agriculture. Have you heard about this precision agriculture? There are a lot of remote, here were a lot of remote sensing of emissions of greenhouse gases. They are helping you to identify the, quantify the emissions that are taking place from the agriculture and forestry practices. And such information is very valuable in guiding regulations or incentivizing for the government so that, so that it can lead to a better land practices. Because how can you do a effective targeting and pinpointing the source, sources of emissions while enforcing the regulations? So let me give an example on this exam in this in this in this problem statement. You know, uh, you know, and people in staying in Delhi would NCR would understand this problem more precisely. You see, what happens is every year we have this problem of pollutions, right? I'm sure those in other parts of the country must have heard about it, or at least over the news that this this huge problem of pollution exists. So what does the government do? It actually flies flies a drone. And they take an image and then they make an image comparison. So it's an image analytics problem it becomes with the old data of the farmland. Because they've flown the drone, they know the coordinates. So based on the based on these coordinates, they come to know which farmland it is. They make an image comparison. They pull out the data from the, 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 the database. They come to know who the landowner is. And immediately an automated challenge is sent out. With the image attached, this is what is happening. You were burning your fields. This way, you are liable for this kind of amount of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, penalty. This is a real-time example I'm talking about. Now, I want to talk about one important aspect before I wind up. You know, because we are running short of time, we'll be running short of time in a couple of minutes. It's about industry 4.0. So, what was industry 1.0? It's all about mechanical production. Then we came down to industry 2.0, which is about, you know, mass production. Then we came down to industry 3.0, which was about application of electronics and information technology for the further automation. Now we're looking at industry 4.0, where you're looking at the cyber physical production systems, CPPS as we call them, and merging of the, merging of the real and the virtual worlds as we were talking about it, right? This is what is industry 4.0. The cyber and the physical production systems are being merged together. And therefore, you have something like this, you know, in the physical world and the virtual world, there is no more difference. Yes, sir. Right? So you're looking at a complete system where, uh, you know, your services are, and, and the maintenance and the production plants are very much interconnected with the physical, virtual world. You have the production which is gone, talking about your con con condition monitoring, your capabilities and robustness and the flexibility. And the consumer usage is all about, you know, applications, sensors, data collection, condition monitoring. And the maintenance and repair replacement, you know, if I go and talk about your products and services on, on, on social media and you're not able to respond fast, your reputation will come down very fast. And this is what is industry 4.0 all about. Merging of the physical and the, and the virtual world. CPPS as I call them. Cyber physical production systems. 
and therefore you have another example in this, you know logistic systems look at this case you have the services of that are being there the financial demand that are being applied look at this case of you know inability to uh, risk evaluation and operational efficiency cap capability planning now again i'll go back to the coronavirus time that we are living in right now i am ordering goods and services my area is a contain contain containment zone and your path cross crosses through my area how do you handle the logistic planning now a real time system we look at another one is the environmental intelligence very interesting problem in where when you have these you know vehicles uh, of these uh, uh, e-commerce companies they have attached got, they got a lot of these uh, sensors attached and these sensors collect information about the pollution the road condition the parking space and all these pieces of, piece of information is being collected and being used by the municipal corporations for better planning and improvement of the lives in the cities real time route optimization problem address verification problems strategic network planning so these are some of the examples that i wanted to talk about uh, for the society 4 5.0 this is where we have come down to in our lives now this is all about improvement of lives in a holistic manner that's all i wanted to talk so you are open, we are open to question and answers for 2 minute 3 minutes sir i have a basic question hello yeah please go ahead uh sir Uh, like I am very interested to learn more about this topic, but I just don't know much more about it. So, for from where we we should start from for learning it. One of the things that you know you need to do is you need to understand the business and the technology both combined together. Yes, sir. You need to understand what problem statement are you trying to solve? Why are you trying to solve this? So I have given a lot of examples about the ocean part and the climate change, the disaster risk, the IoT-based systems, the 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 you know the the uh, cases where you're using a smart mobiles, the smart devices, and also the cases where you're talking about like big Drones. data-based systems. Yes, sir. You need to understand the business problem you're trying to solve and why you're trying to solve and how this can be disrupted. So you need to understand a lot of aspects of life now. The IoT based systems, the five Gs of the world, how so much of transformation of information that will be flowing in because of the arrival of five G. How will you handle that volume of game that is happening? Catastrophic modeling is one big area that everybody is looking towards now. What is the financial implications? Everybody wants to be a financial gig. Let me ask you: What are the financial implications of these technologies? What is going to be the disaster risk? How how will the disaster part impact your business part of the game? If you're not ready to play these games, how will the change in the climate impact you directly? This is what I I've been I was trying to highlight. You know, a lot of things are happening. We are not observing very closely. We need to observe very closely. There are enough problem statements to be solved around. Somebody else as well. Somebody else. No question, sir. That's really great. On my part, I have been able to explain to everybody what I meant. What are your thoughts? Your views? Any bit? Anything would also be good enough. The session was very interactive, sir. Thank you. Yes, a very informative session, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We enjoyed it a lot. Sorry. We enjoyed it a lot, sir. Thank you. I hope you are able to make a mark in these areas because these are all open statements, and the country is very hungry for these new statements, new problems, new solutions.
So, tell me, should we stop the session now? Oh, I guess so. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everybody. Hi. Thank you, sir. Right. First and foremost, I, Sabari, would like to extend my heartiest gratitude to our distinguished speaker, Mr. Atul Tripathi, for the time and effort he has put into delivering such an enlightening session for us. I'm sure that all the participants here have gained immensely on the field of artificial intelligence by attending this event. Furthermore, I would like to thank each and every person who has attended this event and made it a success. We have left our Instagram handles on the chat box and please do follow us for more exciting sessions in the future. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, we have shared the attendance form in the chat box. Do uh, fill the attendance form and see you in the next event. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.